This is the second part of Currents and Circuits. We're going to look at Ohm's Law and Power. And just a reminder about current. Current, current is the amount of charge that's going to transfer, to go through a spot like this spot right here per second. And so just some of the variables we'll use. So the variables I for, for current, um, Q for charge, T for time. The MKS unit for current is ampere from a previous lesson. And then ampere just means that one one coulomb of charge transfers every second. So this V equals IR, V stands for voltage, and it's variables volts, V for volts. Uh, current, the variables I, and the unit is going to be amperes that you would throw after a number. Resistance is R, and it has this horseshoe-like symbol, and it's called ohms as a, the unit. So if your answer was like 20 ohms, you would, could just go and say 20 horseshoes, which is really ohms. And then this equation rearranged, you can rearrange it for I, I equals V over R, and you can also rearrange it for R. Either way, you're going to be dividing out the other. So let's say I was, try, I was trying to solve for I, divide out R. When I divide out R, that goes down here, R goes away, I equals V over R. It's kind of the same deal as happening with the, with when I solve for R. Now, voltage is directly related to current. So if I have a higher voltage, I'm also going to get a higher current. For example, if this is two, from if this goes from one, this is one to two, this also would become two. Resistance is inversely related to current. So if you remember from before, resistance is pushing back against current. And so if this was one and this was one, when this became two, this would become one half. And so this, so resistance goes up, current's going to go down. So that's inversely uh, related. And it's not going to be squared here because there's no square or anything. Um, how long would it take for a charge of 20 coulombs of flow in the presence of tw two amps of current? So I'm going to go through these examples fairly quick. What, what you need to do is pause them, do the work uh, if you're watching the video, and then and then check your answers to make sure you're getting them down. Key is making a givens list, for example, here. Uh, how long would it take time? Uh, you have 20 coulombs of charge. You have two amps of current. And then that leads you to the equation off your equation sheet, but I already put it over here for easy access. Um, but you have to rearrange it for T. So T is down the bottom. You have to multiply out T to get it on the top. If you got rid of everything else, you'd be left with 1 over T because T is down the bottom. So you have to actually, anytime something's down the bottom that you're trying to solve for in the denominator, you're going to multiply it out by both sides. That will get T to the top of the other side. But now we don't want I there. So we're going to divide out I from both sides. And when we divide out I from both sides, you get T equals Q over I, which is exactly what you see right here. So you plug in your values and you get 10 seconds. So that's how long it would take. Second question, second example. Once again, keep on pausing it and doing the work and then coming back and checking it. How much current would flow if you had a 9 volt battery with a resistance, so 18 ohm resistance? You have your equation right here that rearranges to that one. So when I'm trying to solve for current, I'm going to divide up the R, divide up the R, ends up being I equals V over R. Um, throw in the numbers, you're going to get 0.5 amps of current. Now we're going to look at power a little bit. Power is a product of current and voltage. Um, power is kind of it's going to deal with the rate. Um, of, of the current. So the, the, the variable for power is P. So you find the P in the equation. And anytime you solve for power, you're going to, whatever it might be, 20 watts, watt W is going to be the unit you'll put behind the number. Again, these are the different equations that relate power, voltage, and resistance. First of all, power is current times voltage. Power equals current squared times resistance. Power equals voltage squared over resistance. And then power equals energy over time, or work over time, which we've seen in, in the previous uh, previous lesson. How much power is present when the current of 8 amps flows in a circuit that has a resistance of 100 ohms? So it's all about, like, once again, you wouldn't have this given to you. Uh, it would be on an equation sheet, and you'd have to find it. So you have to make good givens list based on what you're given. So they ask us for how much power. They tell us it's 8 amps of current. And they tell us resistance of 100 ohms. So that's going to lead you to this equation. Then you have this equation. You don't have to rearrange it because it's already set up for P. You plug in the value values and you get 6,400 6, watts for your answer. What's the potential difference in a current? And just a reminder from a previous lesson, potential difference is another saying, a way of saying voltage. So what's the voltage in a current that has 1,500 watts of power and 120 ohms of resistance? That's going to lead you to this equation. 
you plug it in, you have to rearrange it. So in this case, when you rearrange it, V is on top, so that's fine. We can multiply out the R, and when we multiply out the R, we still have to get rid of the squared. So we're going to take get rid of the squared. That would get rid of this, V equals square root of RP, and that's what you see right here. Or PR, RP, same thing. Plug in, in the values, make sure you take the square root of the answer, and we get 424.26 volts. Next thing you're going to see on an electricity bill, you are billed in the U.S. in cost per kilowatt hour. So this is the one time we're going to go away from S from MKS units. And here we're going to have to make sure that we're in kilowatts and we're in hours. And if you're not in kilowatts and hours in these problems, when you when you see the power usage of a light bulb or something like that, you're going to have to convert to kilowatts and you're going to have to convert to hours. In this example, in some of these examples, we'll use the power... Um, power bill from, from a previous year where it was 16.0412 cents. Um, just use whatever, you know, if, if your question gives you a different power uh, cost, um, it's then, then go ahead and use whatever cost you have. If the power is quoted in dollars instead of cents, your unit that you'll end up with would be dollars instead of cents. But all, all the ones we're going to do is gonna, are going to be quoted in cents. So, so that will be our unit for the final answer. Another thing is if you're not in kilowatts, you must convert to, to, to kilowatts. So if you're given watts, like a th um, a 1,000 watts equals a kilowatt. So take whatever, like let's say it was 65 watts, divided by 1,000, you'd get 0 0.065. Um, you're just going to divide it by 1,000, and then you can be left off with kilowatts. You need to make sure you're in kilowatts. If you're in watts, in kilowatts already, you're, you're good. You're not going to have to do any conversions for that part. But then you have to make sure you're in hours. And if you're in minutes, well, you're going to have to take that, let's say, you know, 30 minutes, well, you have to take that divided by 60 to make it hours, which is half an hour or 0.5 hours. If you're given seconds, like 300 seconds, then you're going to have to divide that by 3,600 to get to hours. Once again, you need to make sure you're in hours as well. So you're going to have to do a conversion. If you're given hours, you're good. You're, you're going to stay in hours. I should have wrote that like that since I did the same thing there. Uh, either way, just I should have kept it consistent. Uh, once you are in kilowatts and hours, just multiply the kilowatts times the hours. And so you'll finish off the problem just by multiplying the power in kilowatts. Once we got the kilowatts, time in hours, and then the cost, and then whatever unit we were built in. In the previous example, we were building cents. So the unit for this one, we were done with it would be cents. So these are some common electrical devices, and we're going to use this in a couple of examples. Air conditioners are pretty uh, intensive on the power, um, and then you have some things like light bulbs nowadays are, are pretty efficient, but depending on what type of light bulb, you might have one a little bit higher wattage, one less. Um, cell phone charger in use versus not in use. Uh, remember, if you plug in your cell phone and, and you don't have anything plugged into it, that, that transistor would still... Uh, well, um, well, actually, this is not just a transistor. This is talking about the cell phone while you're using it. But the transistor itself would even use you would use power. So the brightness of bulbs. Back when I was young, we only had incandescent bulbs. But nowadays, we're getting better and better and better and more efficient. And most bulbs, uh, well, a lot of bulbs are are, are halogen or are really um, uh, chlorofluorocarbon. Uh, the, the, they're going to be um, the, these kind of bulbs right here, CFL bulbs. And when we, uh, when we have those bulbs, those are the ones that you'd have at school for the most case. They're fairly efficient, but LED bulbs are a little bit more efficient. And also, you pay a little more, but they end up lasting longer, so they end up overall usually will save you money having all LED bulbs uh, rather than like the CFL bulbs. Now, aluminums has to do with brightness. So like back in the day, I liked the bright light bulbs. I'd get a 100-watt bulb, but now... I can get a 14 watt, watt, well, 14 watt LED bulb and get the same function, same brightness out of it. So that's just what this is kind of talking to you about. Saving, you can save a lot of money if you change all the bulbs in your house if for some reason you're still having incandescent bulbs. But now all these other ones are starting to get ch cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So here's, what's the price of running a 750 watt computer for 10 hours? Uh, with the utility bill costing 16.0412 cents. So if you go ahead and work this, pause the video if you're watching the video, and then check your answer. So we're given power in watts, so we have to convert to kilowatts by dividing by 1,000. So we now have kilowatts. Uh, we we're given hours, so we don't have to convert. We're given cost in cents. And so we can just plug those values in, multiply them together, and you're going to get cost per kilowatt hour of 100, or sorry, cost total of 120 cents for this example.
Here, just uh, asking you to do a little bit more. It's asking you, you're running a, a air conditioner, a coffee maker, and a refrigerator. So you have to add the power of those up together. And we find out we're going to be running these three things at a wattage of 3,825 watts. Well, it's not in kilowatts. We have to divide by 1,000. We get 3.825 kilowatts. Uh, we are given hours, so we're going to stick with three hours. We're given a cost. Multiply the three together, and you're going to get when you get to the answer, 184 cents. So that would be the cost of running an air conditioner, coffee maker, and refrigerator for three hours. Maybe a pretty small refrigerator or air conditioner. Um, okay, so common common energy guide. Uh, when you're trying to go to the store and you'll see, especially if you're looking at TVs, you should, often you'll see this on TV, but you see it on a dishwasher, a bunch of different things. They're going to give you the kilowatt usage Per hour so it's going to tell you how much you're going to use it'll tell you yearly you know cost that you're likely to to, to spend and then also tell you what standard if you're going up here and, and you're going at the top of the energy cost you're, you're getting something that's going to be pretty energy intensive uh, you might be able to save some money by finding another device that's going to be a little lower on that this the, the range of, of yearly costs for a device so this one would be above uh, the, by above usually the high-end average it would, be, it would be using $22 um, for every hour. Okay, so this is our this is our um, the different equations we're going to use, and we're on a problem set. So we'll be picking from through these equations. Make sure that if you haven't done it, do the whole problem set. Come back, check your answers, pause. You know, do the if you're going to do it in 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 in, um, in order, at least do the problem, check with my work, pause it, do the next problem, check with my work, pause it, and keep on going from there. So this next problem set, so the problem set we have current running through a 120 ohm resistor with a voltage drop of 120 volts. So what is the current? How much is the current? We have our resistance of 120 ohms and we have our voltage of 120 volts. And that leads you to V equals IR, which rearranges to I equals V over R. And we get one amp for our answer. Next problem. With the current in problem set one, increase or decrease if you increase the resistance. So I'm just going to remind you of V equals IR, I equals V over R. And so if the resistance increases, current's going to go down. So I don't actually have to do this problem to answer this question. But if I did this problem, I could plug in the values. And I'd find that the current was 0.5 amps here when it was 1 amp there because double the resistance, half the current as a result. How much power is provided by a 20 volt adapter? So how much power 24, for a 20 volt adapter? Um, we have 2.25 amps of current. So that leads us to this equation. We plug it in, we get 45 watts. Next problem, we have how much current when we have a 200 watt device that has 80 ohms of resistance. So this is gonna lead you to this equation, but we have to rearrange it for I. So we have to divide out the R divide out the R. Once we divide out the R, we are going to have to take the square root of both sides to get rid of this. And so you get square root of P over R. Make sure everything is in the parentheses and in the square root um, so that it keeps everything in the square root. You're square, root, square, square rooting everything. And so we have 280, we get 1.58 amps for this problem. Next example, we have um, what's the voltage required to for 200 watt, watts of power? by 200 watts watts of power let me fix that um, to a device with 80 ohms of resistance and so we have this equation right here this one has to be a rearranged for v so this time we're going to multiply out the r then we're going to take the square root to get rid of this and get v equals square root of p times r or r times p either way but they're both going to be underneath the parentheses we get an answer of 126.5 volts What's the cost of running a 3.1 kilowatt air conditioner for eight hours? So we're already given kilowatts in, of power. We're already given eight watts or eight hours. We're, we're given 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So this one, you have no re, no uh, no conversions. We'll get 396.8 cents for the answer here. What's the cost of leaving on your 150 watt LCD TV while you go out for a 45 minute walk? It would cost 16 cents per. So you take the 150 watt divided by 1,000 to get kilowatts. So we have kilowatts now. We take the 45 minutes. We divide it by 60 to get hours. Once again, now we're in kilowatts and hours. 
and then we'll, we can go ahead and take that 16 cents and we can find out the cost overall by multiplying the three together. And we get 1.8 cents as our answer. What's the cost of leaving lights on the kitchen during school for eight hours, which is made up of six 14 watt bulbs? So if you weren't given this part, you would just take the six times 14 to find the overall wattage, but I went ahead and gave you the wattage. And the cost is at 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So we get 18, 84 watts. We've got to convert by dividing by 1,000 to make it kilowatts. We're given eight hours. We're already good there. We got 16 cents, and we can multiply the three together, and we'll get 10.75 cents as our answer. This question, how much would you say washing clothes in cold water at 0.3 kilowatts per hour rather than hot water at 4.5 kilowatts per hour after doing two hours of laundry at a cost of 16 cents per kilowatt hour? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the cost savings. So instead of 4.5 minus the 0.3, that's the difference of using the, the hot water uh, versus the, the cold water. So we're saving this if we use cold water. So our power is already in kilowatts. We're already given time in hours. We're given the 16 cents. And you multiply the three together and you get 134.4 cents as your answer.